Australia will give 49 of its aging M1A1 Abrams tanks to Ukraine months after Kiev requested the redundant fleet, Defense Minister Richard Murleys said Thursday. The fleet of US-made M1A1 tanks are valued at 245 million Australian dollars, he said. They will be replaced in Australia by a next-generation M1A2 fleet. Murleys had said in February that giving Ukraine the tanks as they were phased out was not on his government's agenda. Murleys said on Thursday he did not regard the donation as a backflip. We talk with the Ukrainian government consistently around how best we can support them, Murleys told Australian Broadcasting Corporation Ukraine's ambassador to Australia, Vassil Myroshnikenko, did not comment on opposition lawmakers' criticisms that the tanks should have been donated earlier. This is a very timely, a very substantial and very fit-for-purpose announcement, Myroshnikenko said. The tanks bring the total value of Australia's military assistance to Ukraine since the start of the Russian invasion in 2023 to over 1.3 billion Australian dollars. This is a very significant contribution. It's $245 million worth of uh, defence material, 49 Abrams tanks. This is going to significantly boost the mobile fire capability of uh, the Ukrainian armed forces. We, we talk with uh, the Ukrainian government uh, consistently around how best we can support them. They, for example, were seeking integrated air and missile defence, and, and that has been a feature of the packages that we've announced this year. Um, you know, I announced a package of $250 million worth of support in July when I was at NATO, $100 million when I was in Ukraine earlier in the year. Uh, we, we, we look at uh, the material that we have, uh, it, its effectiveness, how the, the shape that it's in, to be frank, um, how, whether it would be able to make a difference, whether it can be sustained and maintained so that it can be kept in the fight. And the Abrams tanks you know, fit all of those criteria and we're really pleased that we're in a position to be able to give them to Ukraine. I think the point to make here is that uh, there is a lot at stake, obviously for Ukraine, but for the world. I mean, Ukraine is fighting for its own country, but in so many ways, Ukraine is really on the front line of fighting for the global rules-based order, uh, which stands in the interests of uh, certainly Australia, but countries around the world. I mean, we cannot allow to stand the idea that a large country can invade a smaller na neighbour, not by reference to international law, but by reference to power and might. Uh, and so we stand with the international community in terms of supporting Ukraine, and we will continue to do that. Uh, this is a very timely, a very substantial and very fit for purpose uh, announcement. Uh, as you know, tanks are an essential part of the land defenses and the front line currently is extending over a thousand kilometers long. So those tanks will be there uh, to help us defend ourselves and they will be saving many lives. So that's, that's a significant contribution to our defense. We respect the decision of the government. It was not an easy one, and I'm very happy that it was a positive one. And uh, Ukrainians are very grateful. We'll never forget Australian support. This, uh, the tanks will contribute to, to the further deterrent, but mostly we, we still need to achieve the end of this war. But uh, definitely we need those tanks now. Uh, our soldiers have been already trained uh, using some of those tanks which were provided earlier by the US government. And uh, it will be a serious contribution to our military capabilities. Columns of smoke were seen rising in the Gaza Strip on Wednesday, as Israeli military tanks patrolled the border area in southern Israel. Israel is still at war in Gaza more than a year after Hamas attack, in which some 1,200 people were killed, mostly civilians, and another 250 were abducted. Around 100 captives are still being held in Gaza, about a third of whom are believed to be dead. Israel has been carrying out a major operation for more than a week in Jabalia, an urban refugee camp in northern Gaza dating back to the 1948 war surrounding Israel's creation. Israeli forces have repeatedly returned to Jabalia and other areas after saying that Hamas militants had regrouped. Hospitals have received around 350 bodies since the offensive there began on OC6, according to Dr. Monir al bursh the Director General of Gaza's Health Ministry. He told the Associated Press that more than half the dead were women and children, and that many bodies remain in the streets and under the rubble, 
with rescue teams unable to reach them because of Israeli strikes. Entire families have disappeared, he said. Israel's offensive in Gaza has killed over 42,000 people, according to the health ministry, which does not say how many were fighters but says more than half were women and children. The offensive has left large areas in ruins and displaced around 90% of Gaza's population of 2.3 million people, forcing hundreds of thousands into crowded tent camps or schools turned shelters.